Hello everyone. So welcome to our first class, CS uh, 5350 and 6350 machine learning in this spring. So uh, I'm the instructor of this uh, course and my name is Shandy and Z. And you can call me Shandy and or Dr. Z, whatever, because this uh, family name is uh, kind of on Euro. Even in Chinese name is uh, very on Euro, so it's very hard to pronounce. So you can just call me Dr. Z or Professor Z, whatever. So um, uh, first, I would like to briefly introduce myself. I'm, I'm, I'm very honored to uh, teach this class. So, because uh, I'm a researcher in machine learning. I've been in this area for uh, over 10 years. So I'm st I still kind of remember when I, how I was excited when I first uh, uh, came across machine learning techniques. It's kind of magic techniques to me at that time. Like, of course, when I learn more and more, I think it's not that magic. At least it's not as where many like, news uh, have worked. So, <clears throat> So uh, basically, I focus on uh, a branch of machine learning called probabilistic uh, machine learning or Bayesian machine learning. So basically, uh, I like to use Bayesian principles of probability theory and framework to formulate machine learning problems and and solve machine learning problems. Uh, so in Bayesian world, everything is viewed as random variables. So uh, uh, modeling is to construct prior modeling or uh, prior distributions, likelihood, and then the uh, inferences to ask the posterior distributions, and so everything is dealing with random variables and posterior distributions, but um, uh, this will not be covered in our class. So um, here is a list of my research topics, uh, based in non-parametrics, uh, based in deep learning, uh, probability of graphing models, large-scale machine learning system, uh, some uh, more application toward research like tensor matrix uh, factorization, embedded learning, and have uh, applied uh, machine learning techniques uh, in uh, many applications. And the results are quite exciting. Uh, quite exciting, like applied um, in our collaborative field training, like recommendation, uh, predict click through rate. That's a very important problem in uh, online advertising. Uh, so uh, uh, now they. Maybe a lot of like, many people kind of uh, a sick of like uh, some advertised Tesla pop up in front of your iPhone or your web page, but we have tried very hard to optimize it to make it uh, uh, yeah, look better. Otherwise, it will be even uh, uh, make people like sick of it. So believe me, and uh, <coughs> I also try to. Uh, apply machine learning techniques uh, to solve uh, physical problems. Like, can you use uh, artificial, uh, can, you, can you use artificial neural networks to solve partial differential equations? That's kind of a cool uh, idea, and it's very hard uh, right now in traditional physical simulation people. And uh, brain imaging data analysis, can we uh, analyze um, the activities of your brain regions to detect which regions, which activities, which regions perform like um, abnormal activities, which indicate uh, syndromes like Alzheimer's disease, right. and the genetic analysis, right? How how do you identify? Just you just have like uh, twenty samples, but but each each sample is, is a person subject. I mean, profession jargon is subject. That's how medical person uh, call. A patient or some people call a uh, subject. You only have like 20 subjects, and each subject has like uh, 10,000 genes or 100,000 genes. I want to I want to say which particular set of genes might might be highly related to say brain cancer or some tumor. We need to use machine learning. So a lot of excited uh, research and applications. Um, so I'm I really enjoy doing such kind of research. And, uh, and also really enjoying uh, 
to deliver the important principles and ideas of machine learning uh, to you guys. And hopefully, you can learn some uh, useful out of from this class. So, uh, here is the, today's uh, outline. So, um, I'll first give a, a definition of machine learning. <laughs> and uh, uh, briefly introduce what kind of applications uh, maybe you have been aware of, or maybe you have your daily lives. And uh, then we're going to briefly introduce course content. And then we'll go through very detail the course requirements and the policies. Because this course is uh, known to be very challenging. I'm not trying to scare you, but uh, uh, I want you to make a wise choice. So I, I would like to first give you a very detailed uh, uh, review of those uh, policies and requirements so that you can make a, make a wise choice because everyone is multitasking. Right? You have a lot of uh, other uh, uh, other courses or research projects or even jobs. right? And then uh, we'll go through some basic knowledge uh, uh, which are necessary to understand the uh, content we're going to cover uh, in the whole semester, and uh, uh, if you have a login to the campus, you may have noticed that I have released uh, a course survey. So that survey is not test, so don't be don't worry about that. You just want to collect your background information and your expectation about this course. If some someone may ask, I want I want to study machine learning. Someone will, I want to I want to learn. Um, machine learning techniques to address practical problems. Uh, uh, please spend a few minutes to take that uh, to take that survey, so that we can we can know your expectation, and so that we can tailor and arrange the content to help you satisfy your or achieve your goal. And also, if you take that survey, you will have some extra bonus. Okay, so. Um, Is my is my sound can be heard clearly? I mean, even in the very back. Otherwise, I can increase my voice. I, I'm not I'm, I'm not some people who like to talk loudly, but I will try. You cannot hear me very clearly. Okay. So first, uh, um, let us think of a problem. What is uh, learning? And uh, for the what is machine learning? So uh, uh, can anyone give me your Understanding about learning or machine learning, uh, any kind of. Huh? It's an adaptive behavior. Yeah, sounds uh, yeah adaptive behavior. So um, yeah, sounds very uh, in depth description. Uh, adaptive in what? Do you have uh, like any further thoughts? Uh, not. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Wrong. Yeah, that, that's that's totally fine. Yeah. Uh, adaptive in that uh, uh, it's dynamic depending on the information that is provided, so it's uh, cumulative. Okay, so uh, more detail. So if, um, yeah, uh, let me let me finish that. So uh, my understanding that you are saying like when I uh, say more and more information. I'm gonna improve some kind of internal capability, right? Okay, what's your? Uh, you the same thing in a different situation. Okay, yeah, yeah, definitely. It is it, actually a proof of demonstration of your learning, right? So, yeah. I was just gonna say that, you know, learning, you know, broken down to its most basic form is really gathering information and organizing information, right? And yeah. how you do that and how you apply <coughs> A problem to the information, like how do I get from here to the restaurant, or you know something like that. Um, you apply that information, the information you have, about like oh, I know I can take this street and this street and this street. So learning, I mean, when you asked about the definition of learning, it seemed like you wanted more of a basic, a basic definition. Yeah, not, yeah. Not necessarily yeah. the machine learning definition. <coughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm trying to like. Uh, Give a general description of learning. Yeah, from your viewpoint, it's kind of uh, information processing and uh, 
of solving in such kind of procedure, right? This is this is this is it's very it's an excellent point of view. Okay. Any other suggestion? Uh -huh. uh, it's also it's also more than just organization. It's uh, taking separate pieces and connecting them and forming uh, you know abstractions and applying certain information from one field to another. It's a little bit more like interconnected than just absorbing. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of integration, um, digestion, right, and also some kind of abstraction. Right? Yeah, yeah, great. Oh, uh, maybe, maybe limited on the application side, but trying to uh, you know, predict or judge something based on whatever you have previously seen or. Oh yeah, this is more um, specific, right? like a task specific. Right? Yeah. So I have the same some of a few uh, examples of dealing with some special tasks. That means when you perform the same task next time, you're gonna be able to do that, right? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Any other suggestion? Well, nice. I think I think uh, it's really good. It's really, really good, and they provide a lot of uh, uh, I think insightful and very interesting uh, understanding of uh, learning. So I'm trying to uh, give some possible definition, but that doesn't mean that possible definition is, is the right one. Right? So I'm trying to just uh, <coughs> uh, let us to think of right? not just the, the okay learning and machine learning is kind of buzzwords, but we know. We, we need to know what is learning, right? What is learning procedure? So um, we can start with a, 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 a game. Right? The game was uh, played 25 years ago um, in uh, a computational learning theory conference. It's called Coke. It's still a top conference right now. And. Uh, the attendees of the 1994 conference in Code, uh, they receive they receive conference badges. Badges, right? Badges usually have your name, have your titles, and whatever for you to uh, to be convenient to make friends, right? And but this time they also have some uh, labels on each badge, right? either positive labels or negative labels. But this is not like a <laughs> positive label means that you're a good person and negative labels are a bad person. It's not, it's not that. It's just some kind of label. But how do you generate this label? Um, only one attendee knew that. All the other uh, attendees did not know. So the game is that you want to collect examples of the labels for those badges as many as possible, and then trying to recover the underlying uh, function or mechanism to generate the labels. Right. So uh, here are a few uh, examples. Right. So here's name, his label, Peter Buckley, uh, Berkeley, his uh, uh, a big name in the learning theory, and Eric Baum, his big name in uh, Guessing natural language processing, and uh, Michael Jordan is uh, is now basketball basketball uh, basketball player. It's a it's a it's a it's a it's a, a very big name in machine learning. Okay, so uh, suppose you are you have collected a set of uh, badges with names on them and the labels on them. Right? So the question is that have we learned from those badges? What kind of mechanism? Map the name to the label. Yeah, let's watch it for five seconds and try to guess it. Uh huh. Is it that if your <clears throat> first name has an even number of letters, you get a minus and an odd number of letters, you get a plus? Oh, nice. It's really nice. I was trying to figure it out last night, but I failed. <laughs> Any other suggestion? 
everyone agrees with this uh, rule? Yeah, it looks like it's a simple and elegant rule, right? I, I'm not sure. I, I do not know the answer. But I just want you to experience what is the so-called learning procedure. Right? So from this uh, game, right, the learning is just uh, like I look at uh, a set of examples. Right? Now I want to guess um, the mechanism to predict the labels from the names, right? Names are something I have uh, in my hand, right? So next time when I meet a new person, I only have his uh, names and badge. Okay, I just count whether the number of letters in his first name is even odd, and then I can give my prediction, right? So this is a, a human learning procedure. Of course, it's kind of like very narrow uh, learning experience. A true human learning experience is being more complicated than that. That's just one specific example. So playing a bad game is a typical learning procedure. Now, if we replace our player with machines, this is a machine learning procedure. So probably I throw this uh, set of examples at six. Some uh, five or six examples into a machine learning algorithm, it will give you exactly the same rule. But it's, that's based on if you, if, you, if, you, if you extract the right features. But probably it will, if you throw it into a very complicated artificial neural net, it will give you a black box functions and also well fit the uh, labels as well. But anyway, the processing is like this. I have collected a set of uh, examples, which we call training examples. And then I throw it into some uh, learning algorithms, and learning algorithm learn some mechanism to map the input to the output. Once we identify such kind of mapping mechanism, I can do the prediction. That's, where we, uh, that's when and where we apply what we have learned. Any, any questions so far? So here, uh, let us look at some uh, like practical examples and successful examples. So our goal, uh, Go Games. So how many, how many of you have heard of Go Games? Before our goal. Oh, nice. I don't know how to play Go Games. <laughs> I know it originates from uh, my home country, but I don't know how to play. I even do not know what, what is the what is rule to play. But what I know is that this is very very uh, hard for a computer to do that. Well, um, I want to share some gossip with you. I, about like 20, 20 years ago, um, twenty two years ago. Um, have everyone heard about the Deep Blue chess game, right? And uh, beat the uh, beat the worst uh, world war champions, uh, Russia, Russian um, as Kasparov. And he's kind of he's he's known as a genius in playing chess. It's not it's not a go go game. Right? And it was uh, uh, he was defeated by a computer program. It's called Deep Blue. Deep Blue. And at that time. Bill Gates came to some Chinese researchers um, who are also mathematicians. He wants to develop a computer programs to beat Go players. And he said he's willing to provide provide like as uh, much funding as possible. This is this is really amazing. Right? If someone wants wants me wants to provide me such kind of funding opportunity. Just let me know. <laughs> I, 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 I will more than, uh, I'll be more than, uh, more than grateful than that. Right? But guess what? That mathematician rejected that. He said this is a hopeless project. He never, uh, he never thought that someday a computer go computer program can beat human players. And at that time, that, that is true. 
The reason is that the Go game, the state space, if you, if you imagine, like, how does the Deep Blue defeat, defeated the uh, human players? It uses a very smart heuristic search algorithm. Like, you, you, place, you place one step, he plays one step, he plays one step. It's just ignoring all possible passes. And then pick up the one best, best for, uh, for the computer. You use that way to win it. But that method won't work for Go game because the all possible ways to finish one Go game is way uh, more than the ways to finish one chess game. So someone have, uh, have counted that is a uh, is magnitude of uh, order of magnitude larger than the total atoms in the whole universe. So no matter how powerful your computer is, maybe a quantum computer can do that. But yeah, but but we, uh, I don't I don't expect a practical quantum computer uh, will be implemented in my uh, in my life, right? So so you cannot enumerate all possible properties. So at that time, people never um, expect that some kind of computer program can beat uh, human players. But in the recent few years, the breakthrough has been made. Right? So everyone knows that uh, the AlphaGo developed by Google uh, very easily uh, beat the uh, the world best of Go game champion. So right now it's a Chinese. Previous is a uh, uh, Japanese, oh, Jap not Japanese, it's uh, uh, people from uh, Korean, and now Chinese. But, but it doesn't matter. No human beings right now can, can win AlphaGo. Right. So it's just after two, uh, 20 years. And technically, it's cost is a, is a, is a, is a, is a so called like Markov, Markov chain, uh, Monte Carlo, Markov. Markov chain Monte Carlo tree search plus deep neural nets. So basically, they will they will this as an image. They will feed this uh, image into some deep neural nets, and deep neural nets will give you some output as an evaluation of the current status. It tells you whether the current chess, the status of current 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 chess ball is better for you. If you want to uh, increase your chance to win, which uh, where you should place the next uh, uh, right. So it's, it's, it's kind of incredible uh, improvement, right? But I would rather call this uh, AlphaGo uh, as a machine learning algorithm rather than rather than artificial intelligence, because if you look at if you have some time look at the nature paper, you find the idea is not that hard. And in addition to that, there are many, many uh, machine learning applications. And uh, has. Uh -huh. What's the distinction between machine learning and artificial intelligence? Uh, well, you can view machine learning as just a branch of uh, artificial intelligence. But right now, I think the uh, resurgence or prosperity of artificial intelligence is totally driven by machine learning. Uh, other areas of uh, artificial intelligence, to me, I think yeah, they have already been there. So, I don't know sometimes why people call it artificial intelligence because it's not the intelligence. Mm -hmm. We're still there's still like big giant gap between machine learning and uh, <coughs> intelligence. Right? But but in some in some tasks like playing games, or even playing uh, computer games like Star Trek or, or whatever, uh, the computer programs can achieve really I mean, amazing performance. Also look at recognize human voices and recognize human faces. So it's really good. And other question? Yeah, here I just want to uh, list a set of uh, examples. So some some examples uh, every day. I mean every day examples. Um, everyone is using it, but um, maybe just part of you have realized it is driven by machine learning. Like uh, uh, every time, like when you buy something, Amazon or eBay or whatever, right? so it always gives you some recommendation. So this recommendation is automatically generated by um, by machine learning algorithms. You like those kind of recommendations? Oh, I'm surprised that some of you like it. 
I don't like it that much. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I mean, Amazon pays a lot of uh, machine learning researchers and science, research scientists to, to improve that, to make you like it, and to, to encourage you to buy it, to, in, to improve the, uh, to, to increase profit. Every 1% improvement of their click through rate, even if you just click it, not buy it, it will increase like millions of dollars profit. It's really, really uh, surprising, actually. Translation, right? um, Google Translation. So um, I still remember the at the very beginning when Google released their uh, translation uh, service. At that time, um, I tried that. I feel like it's just a toy. It's not practical at all. But right now, they have they have again very substantial uh, improvement. In many many cases, you just paste all the text and do it, and, and you will see you will see the translations. It's reasonable. I mean, it's not it's not perfect. Obviously, it's not perfect. It's free, right? But it's, it, it is useful. Sometimes when I write some when I write, I have to write some like English. You know, I have to write it every every day, right? Every minute. And sometimes I just I just compose some uh, mother language into that. And, and then, and then, and then, and then modify it on top of that. And I want, I want to emphasize, so it's really an amazing improvement. And also, uh, automat uh, automatic car, right? So if you have driven uh, the uh, uh, Tesla, if you use autopilot, um, of course, uh, a lot of people criticize the autopilot. Uh, so, but a lot of people like it, it's really convenient. To me, it's convenient because when I drive on the highway, like for more than uh, two hours, I'm gonna sleep. I'm really I'm gonna sleep. I have to I have to uh, stop by some gas station, uh, sleep for ten minutes. Like, um, and uh, what is the core technique of that? Right? We know we have we have they have to use some data, but they also use the combine with the. Uh, Deep neural nets to recognize uh, the, uh, the, the, the the lanes and also the possible obstacles and also uh, traffic si signals. It's very important. And even if you if you uh, if you have purchased like iPhone 10, right, they have a like new identity recognition uh, face recognition. It's called Face ID, right? The service. Uh, it is done by neural nets, and to accelerate the speed, Apple has to design their own. Uh, CPU or GPU, whatever. And this is a, a funny example. So you can look at this. Uh, this uh, helicopter was flying by some computer program rather than human beings. So, so you can see uh, the propeller is uh, on the bottom. So a uh, helicopter is known to be the hardest uh, uh, aircraft to fly. It's very hard. And, and if you want to fly in this way, it's even harder. Right? But this is done by a computer program. Right? So if you, if, you, if you want to look at a video, you can search in the YouTube. Uh, there's some YouTube showing that how you fly. At, at the beginning, you just fly just as normal uh, flying, but then suddenly you just uh, uh, switch them. Like spam email detection every time. Uh, if, if you do not have a spam email detection uh, function, your email box will be filled up uh, like uh, spam emails. Those are done by machine learning algorithms. And find all people in photo every time you use your uh, digital camera, right? So most digital camera cameras, I suppose, they have like bounding boxes to uh, to recognize the faces. Okay? So there's those are done by machine learning algorithm called Ada Boost. And uh, we're gonna cover it, and you are you are you will be required to implement and uh, movie recommendation, and based on purchase history, um, recommend your new products and uh, predict stock prices uh, and the handwritten uh, recommendations. This is another uh, application machine learning has been used for like uh, decades. So we will we will we will we will we are trying to. Uh, send out letters or USPS. Actually, there are, there, there there will be there won't be many people look at what your postcode is and uh, throw it into different trucks. This this done um, 
99% by machines. And this, and this is applied many, many years ago. It's not, a, it's not, it's not a recent application. It was applied many, many years ago. And this is called uh, the, uh, a very successful neural network of doing this called LearNet, uh, developed by uh, Lequin Yen, uh, a Tony Award. Uh, he just got a uh, Tony Award last year. And yeah, uh, online advertisement. Right? So uh, don't feel sick of that. The machine learning engineers and researchers are trying to place them in the best places and uh, to attract them. And uh, yeah, translation and drive and uh, uh, genetic uh, uh, data analysis, etc. There are many, many, uh, I mean, millions of cases <coughs> where machine learning has been successful applied and uh, influence our real lives. Uh, some of you, some some of them, you may feel it. Some of them not. So now, given such kind of examples, let's let's try to go back to define uh, machine learning. Right? What is machine? Learning? Uh, can we give a, a kind of a rigorous definition of that, right? So you guys have provided several uh, definitions from different angles, from different viewpoints. It's really excellent. And here, from computational, from a computer science point of, point of view, how do we define machine learning, right? So here, I just uh, want to cite a few uh, classical definition given by the pioneers of artificial intelligence. The first one is given by uh, Arthur Samuel. Uh, He's one of the uh, uh, he's one uh, one of the pioneer who proposed the concept of artificial intelligence. Right? He said that machine learning is a field of study that gives computers the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. <coughs> right? That means if you want to recognize object, you do not need to uh, code a lot of rules. Right? You, you, you do not need to code how do you Pick up this pixel and look at this pixel. What what's the color of that? What is RGB values? So this gives a like kind of very insightful <coughs> definition, but still not very say uh, operational. You want to make it. You can you want to make this whole machine learning as kind of a, a data processing or computing procedure to be more clear. So later, uh, Herbert Simon uh, in 1983. He finds that uh, learning denotes changes in the system that are adaptive, right? Adaptive. Uh, in the sense that they enable the system to do the task or task drawn from the same population more effectively the next time. So basically it shows like dynamic behaviors, right? So when you learn more and more, we'll come and we'll will we'll understand and reach more information in your actually. Uh, improve your capability of doing some special task. A more, an even more detailed definition is given by Tom Shell. Uh, he said that uh, a computer program, right? Machine learning is done by computer programs. He said to learn from experience E with respect to some class of tasks T. And performance measure P, if its performance at tasks in T as measured by P improves with experience E. So this is basically is uh, much more formal. It's much more formal, but uh, uh, it uh, uh, reveals some uh, uh, ingredients, very very important ingredients in the learning procedure. First, you're gonna you're gonna have some experience from which you can learn. Right? We denote by E, and uh, you, you have to you have to define the tasks. You want to learn some capability to deal with this type of task T, right? and you have to evaluate the quality that you do this task. The quality uh, is given by P. Right? So when can we call a computer program a learning program right? for this specific specific type of tasks T? If my computer Program when it is fed with some experience, it can improve doing this task, and such improvement can be reflected by this uh, measurement p. Okay. Hopefully, this definition now make me uh, now make you feel like very boring. 
just give you a, a some insight about. I mean, from compute from a, from, a, from a machine learning perspective, what kind of uh, important elements we should have? Right? Experience type of tasks and performance maybe. Any questions so far? Okay. So, from another point of view, learning is essentially a capability to uh, generalize. Right? Suppose your task is to recognize dogs in pictures. You're given a set a bunch of uh, uh, examples that contain a variety, a variety of dogs, right? So next, I hope that uh, or I expect my machine learning algorithm can recognize uh, some dog which I've never seen before. Although it wears a cool pair of gloves, I can still recognize this dog, not a cat, or not a horse, whatever. That actually uh, shows that learning essentially a capability to generalize. From a finite number of examples, I can generalize, I can capture the essence of the concept. When I look at the new instance, I can still recognize the. <laughs> Are one of the dogs up there your your dog? No, actually, you don't have a dog. I haven't. Had, I, I I got my dog in, uh, in my childhood, but, but later when I when I grow up, I don't have my, I don't have dogs. And do, so, do we expect a machine learning algorithm to be able to tell what breed of dog, or just that it's a dog? Uh, you we, can do both. Maybe we can do both. Yeah. Uh, if you want to do a very fancy machine learning algorithm, you can do that. But usually, that will need uh, more training examples. <coughs> Any other question? Okay. So, why should we study machine learning? Right. Uh, one possible reason might be it is uh, hot. Right. But in addition to that, what other motivations do we have? Right. So. <coughs> Uh, I want to build computer programs or system with new capabilities, so that I do not. I want to. I want to cultivate. I want to. I want to build a, a, a problem solver, rather than, rather than I solve every single problem by myself. That means I uh, I'll be very tired. So I want to build a powerful um, agent to solve the problems. Dealing with different kinds of situations, different kinds of uh, problems, right? From the science point, point of view, right, I want to understand the nature of human learning, right? Human, human beings are kind of amazing uh, in that our learning procedure is so complicated but so effective. Right? But what is essence? This is a, uh, a research topic uh, for, uh, uh, for many areas, but there's no, no right answer right now. Perhaps by developing a machine learner which has same capability or close capability in learning in hum uh, to human learning might give us some hints about nature of human learning, right? And the ultimate goal of machine learning, which actually aligns with our ultimate goal of artificial intelligence, is that we want to develop robots that can learn as human beings. And unfortunately, this is still uh, uh, very far away. Uh, although I'm sound like a very deterministic. Of, uh -huh. Why do we want why do we want robots to can make like human beings? Just because it's cool. Like why? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah, because because this science, our science uh, is built upon um, curiosity. Yeah. Rather than some like I want to earn yeah. ten more dollars. Of course, if you if you if you if you, if you invent new science, scientific principles and uh, um, Ideas based on that, uh, that might that might be a lot of like problems, right? But the uh, original <coughs> motivation comes from curiosity. Any other questions? I would just say is like kind of in regards to that ultimate goal thing. I feel like it. I don't know if it'd be a stretch to say. I feel like it's also kind of a goal to develop robots that can do things better than humans, like solve the problems we haven't been able to solve up to this point? Um, uh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, you're right. Um, on some particular kind of problem, robots has already been better than human beings. Yeah. Um, but we're talking about like general, general context. Like, if, uh, like for example, uh, everybody is talking about like big data, right? We know that if, if you want to train very complicated neural nets, like 25, uh, 250 layers neural nets and one million parameters, you need like tons of data. Right? But consider human beings. Do we need to read? Uh, a billion newspapers to learn how to write? No, right? We just learn. I would just read some book and we just write. We just try to write. Okay? We have good quality. And some psychology experiments uh, show that, like a newborn infant, when they listen to human speeches, like for one hour, they can they can uh, they can separate the speech. Uh, in a wide way, very accurately. So people don't know whether it's some kind of inherited from, I mean, genetic inheritance, or I mean, born as a gift, or some special learning mechanism inside human brains. It's kind of magic. Right? You never need like huge data, big data on that. Actually, we do not have like physical uh, devices. We do not have a, we do not have big physical devices to fast read so many papers or whatever. <coughs> but anyway, for some particular task, yeah, indeed, robots has already been uh, even better than human beings. Do you have a, a, a guesstimation on when you think will the ultimate goal will be achieved? Like in our lifetimes, think 100 years out, do you have a great a big idea? Is it too hard to, is it too hard to, to project? <laughs> Well, I cannot give you such kind of uh, estimation. Mm. But, but at least uh, from my perspective, all current research, I mean, popular machine learning methods are not a not way towards such kind of goal. Yeah, they are effective on um, uh, very broad spectrum of tasks, but uh, that does not mean they are the key to these answers. Mm. We might need some more in depth. Research or study on human brains, whatever. Yeah, any other insights or any other comments on that? I would love to discuss those kind of more like a, uh, philosophy things with you guys because um, because later we will gonna cover a lot of our living details, so much more boring. Okay, so uh, also. Um, Give system ability to perform tasks in situations which has never been encountered before, so that we are, will be more robust, right? And uh, also, big data will allow programs to interact more robustly with messy data, because uh, the growth of data, the speed of the data growth, is uh, much much faster than the human's capability to deal with that. We have to uh, we have to take advantage of machine's power. So only machine learning algorithm can can adapt to the data growth, right? We cannot deal with that every every time, every every seconds millions of uh, bytes are are generated. And also, uh, this is from an application perspective, we can start to make inroads <coughs> into any user facing applications. So, um, so those are about like general um, introduction. Uh, I, I just I work at how machine learning is, uh, what is machine learning, and why it's so important, why it's so popular. And how it is amazing. And now uh, let us turn to uh, the goal of this course. Right? So uh, the goal of this course will focus on the underlying concepts and algorithm, uh, algorithmic ideas in the field of machine learning. So uh, here I want to stress uh, on that the course is not about uh, using a specific machine learning tool or um, and a single learning paradigm because this is a not this is not a deep learning course. Of course, we will cover the most important part in deep learning. Uh, I'm not gonna introduce you a thousand architectures for neural nets. So um, uh, we'll we'll introduce uh, we'll give some a few tutorials about like very practical, very useful tools for machine learning like TensorFlow, like PyTorch. I think that will benefit you a lot. Uh, but our focus. 
will be the underlying concepts and algorithm ideas. Like if you take compiler course, uh, I'm pretty much sure the instructor won't spend a whole semester telling you how to use GCC, right? And if you take operating system course, they won't tell you, tell you they, won't, they won't teach you a whole semester uh, how to use all kinds of Linux command, right? Or Unix command. But then they do discuss what is uh, kernel space, what is user space, what is uh, page fault, what is the interruption, etc. Right? So similar kind of uh, strategy of uh, 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 methods apply to machine learning course. Um, you, you will be asked to implement those uh, fundamental and important machine learning algorithms. Although, in the future, if you want to use machine learning to address practical problems, you might not use your own implementation. But through all those uh, basic principles, you will learn the ideas. And based on that, you can even develop your own algorithms. Okay. And uh, how will you learn? So first, I highly encourage you to take classes to learn the model and algorithms. Um, we have like a streaming uh, device to stream the lecture video to some YouTube channel. It's called the uh, 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 UFU Data Channel. So I mean, so later you can review the course con content by looking at the YouTube videos. Um, but to be more effective, I still highly encourage you to come to the class and stay here for one and a half hours and follow the instructors and interact with the instructor. It will be much, much more efficient than you sit in front of your desk and distracted by all kinds of like small videos, and music, and news, and yeah, whatever. Because you, you guys are busy. I, I, I think you guys are busy, right? You are multitaskers. So, and uh, to more effectively utilize your time, I think this is the best way. Okay. And finish the homework assignments and to deepen your understanding. Right? Um, implement the learning models and algorithms yourself. So the implementation is included in the homework assignments. So we have both the paper problems and the practical problems. Practical problems are asked you to implement all those algorithms from scratch. So uh, hopefully you won't be scared of uh, coding. I assume you guys have a background in coding, right? So we have a very, if you issues in coding, let me know. We need to, we, we need to uh, figure out a way to address that. Because this is very important. This, this course is not to uh, just show you a few uh, PowerPoint slides. If you want to really understand machine learning, you have to do it by yourself. And the course project. Uh, we have a course project for using machine learning to address practical problems. So, here yeah, I want to emphasize the workload. <coughs> so, um, the workload of this course is pretty heavy. It's not an easy course. So, we have six homework assignments. And most uh, homework assignments include both LaTeX, I mean, paper problems, and programming problems. And that means you have to use LaTeX. You have to get familiar with LaTeX and write a lot of formulas which might sound tedious, but it's really necessary. I mean, if you want to do some research, develop the work, that has something you must know, you must be familiar with, right? and program problems. You have to conduct a course project. You have to uh, submit several reports. And also you have to, to implement or to do experiments that involve a lot of program. Of course, in a course project, you won't need to implement all the algorithms by yourself. But you have to choose them, you have to read the documentation if you use third-party libraries. You have to design experimental protocols, and also you have to report them. Okay. And also a final exam. I won't give you the midterm exam. Uh, the reason is that I think the, the cost load is, uh, is quite heavy. I don't want you to, uh, I mean, to be, to feel even harder on that. Right? But here in general, this is uh, some warning message. Uh, I, I, uh, again, I, I, I don't want students to suffer from this class. So uh, this course is one of the most challenging courses in CS department. Um, I heard many complaints every year, not from me, 
but also from another instructor. And uh, the workload is very heavy. And uh, in, on average, you need to plan on around 20 hours per year. This is pretty heavy. And you spend a lot of time. And that amount of time will increase when your project or your homework deadline is approaching. But if you have, have, have had some experience in machine learning and you are very uh, proficient with programming and, uh, and all uh, math and all kind of stuff, so you might feel uh, this course is easy, right? But I mean, on average, that's the feedback I got from the students. So, uh, uh, anyway, I just want to emphasize a few cautious when you make decisions. Right? If you really want to take this class, uh, please do plan for sufficient time on that. And then if you I mean if you work hard on that, I think you'll enjoy it, right? But if you don't have enough time on that, this this kind of uh partial right. Okay. Any questions so far? What part of the course do students find so difficult? Is it the length of the assignments, the exams, like understanding the material? Um, well, I don't think understand materials is very hard. Unless you don't take the class, you don't watch the video, then that, that might be some difficult now. The most uh, uh, time consuming part will be the programming part. Um, we have a lot of practical problems. And uh, all those uh, uh, learning algorithms we need to use, including the back propagation in your NAS, you have to implement by yourself. Uh, for homework assignments, uh, no third party uh, libraries are allowed to be used. Uh, for cost per you can use as well. But for homework, you have to implement every algorithm you taught in the class by yourself. That's the strict rule. And, but if you are proficient in uh, programming, uh, I think your, your, your conflict is that, I think you're fine. Uh, sometimes I struggle with the, the gap between uh, between the theory and the actual implementation, which is what you're saying is the problem. Is there a textbook that you would recommend that helps work out the basic algorithms programmatically? Um, uh, I will point out a few references. Okay. And uh, there are some like uh, very big, big, thick books and a uh, reference, but I I think it's more like to be more probably to be a, a some dictionary rather than. Um, some book to read through it. And for some particular hours, I'll point out some papers on that. If you, if you really want to know more details, you can look at the papers. But, um, uh, but for everything is covered in the slides. I believe that if you uh, look through slides, you, have, you, you, you get enough uh, capability to do uh, everything. For sporting and also uh, the homework science. And also something. You mentioned it's very, uh, it's very regarding the gap between theory and uh, practice, right? So, uh, from my previous experience, uh, I think most of the students uh, would love to uh, know, not uh, are not willing to learn any theory, uh, which is not, uh, it's not. I, I, this is machine learning. It's not uh, software engineering. We have to know some basic concepts on that. We won't emphasize on computational learning theory, but some very beautiful and very widely used algorithms like support back machines, they are motivated from computational learning theory. You need to know why. So we'll cover a bit, but won't be that and won't be very, very uh, won't be a lot. And uh, and some of them, some kind of theoretical concept might be reflected in the in the paper problems. But won't be uh, reflected in the uh, you know, in, uh, in, uh, practical problems. Does that make sense? For the uh, homework in the projects, uh, what programming language will we be using? Yeah, that's that's a very good question. So uh, I I planning to talk talk about it later, but right now I can I can show. So I highly recommend you guys to use Python. Um, not only because it's uh, very easy to learn that, even you don't have any CS background. Uh, picking up Python is, 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 is the most straightforward way. And the second will be R or MATLAB. If you're from like statistical department, you might be 
So middle is R, right? That's fine. And I highly, I, 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 I highly do not recommend C++. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, the reason is that, uh, again, this is not a software engineering class. I want you to capture the uh, uh, algorithmic details about machine learning algorithm rather than how do you address the pointer problems, how do you address the, uh, the, the buffer leak problems, those kind of problems. That, that will waste a lot of time because we have a, we have a quite heavy cross load, right? I don't want you guys to, to, to waste a lot of time in debugging such kind of things. You should, you should, you should put a debug, debugging on whether your, your decision tree is correctly created, right? Rather than whether you have a leak to like 10, uh, 10 gigabytes memory. <laughs> Um, is there any like group work in this course? Yeah, yeah, that's a, a cost project. I will later cover it. Where there are two types of cost project, and the second exploratory cost project uh, will allow a group of uh, two people. By the way, uh, are we going to have like a, a standard for in terms of the language for this class, or can you just kind of pick whatever you feel more comfortable with? Yeah, you can pick whatever you feel more comfortable. I just I just recommend you to use Python. <laughs> Yeah, last year uh, some student used Java. It's fine. He's he's uh, it's pretty good uh, at Java. He he can feel more comfortable with Java. It's fine. It's fine. But I but but my, 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 my recommendation is that if you use Python, it you will be more convenient and save a lot of time. Any other question? Uh -huh. uh, can I use uh, just Microsoft Word instead of Attack? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, LaTeX is a is a is a is a straight requirement. Uh, the reason is that we want we uh, uh, when you do the homework, you, you you have to involve a lot of uh, uh, mass mass steps. You have to write uh, equations. You have to write formulas. Uh, uh, use LaTeX is the most effective. And also, I will provide you the LaTeX source file, also template file, and uh, especially for Convenient for write down the uh, mathematical formulas. I have some like secret template, and uh, I uh, I steal I steal it from my advisor. And my advisor steal from MIT. So uh, you will love it. But anyway, we uh, strictly require you guys to use uh, the text. Any other question? Uh huh. Uh, going back to when you said you can't use third party um, things, so that's like, for example, like PyTorch or uh, things like that for machine learning. But can we use things like NumPy and Pandas for? for oh, yeah, learning? yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, you can now use third party machine learning libraries like STLearn. I want you guys to implement, say, uh, logistic regression. You can now call one line code, one, one, one line function of a logistic function. You just made a code. This, this is not a lot. But for matrix, uh, uh, for optimization packages, uh, please use third-party language. Uh, use third-party libraries. Do not waste your time to uh, to implement a matrix multiplication from scratch. That's that's not worth it. What they are Any other question? Huh? What? Um, it's really uh, due in two or three weeks. But sometimes, uh, uh, if uh, a lot of students uh, want to postpone the deadline, uh, I will usually uh, allow the extension on that. Um, but considering we have six homeworks in total, so each homework won't uh, won't won't give you like one month to do that. And I have a question. Okay, great. So now uh, we're going to overview this, uh, uh, this course. So um, first, I want to point you to the I want to point you to this uh, uh, course website. So it's very easy to find it. 
So you just uh, uh, I, uh, you can you can in Google search my name, and you can it will pop to my homepage, and then in the teaching uh, there's a link to this uh, uh, course web page. And also the link is posted in the campus. If you log into the campus, uh, there's a, a section called syllabus. I point out the PDF syllabus, uh, the link to the PDF, and also link to the course website. This is relatively easy, and all the uh, important information will be released on this uh, course website. And also, I will make an announcement if uh, there are any change in the in the, in the, in the cameras. So uh, basically, here's the schedule, right? So uh, Tuesday uh, at Thursday, in this classroom, and from uh, 12:25 to 1:45 is our class. Um, and also a final exam schedule. Okay. So uh, 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 previously, uh, when we approached the end of semester, uh, students came keep asking me when and where will be the uh, final exam. Here, just post here. If you are not, if you want to verify, this is a link to the official page. Uh, our final exam is scheduled uh, right before the semester. Right. So uh, the final exam will be on um, Friday, April twenty fourth. Uh, from uh, 10:30 to 12:30, <coughs> okay. but it's a, uh, it's a it's a it's a long time, right? It's a long time to uh, um, uh, from from now, right? So this is my office uh, in MEB. Uh, I'm in the third floor. My room number is three four double six, and this is my email address. And we have uh, two teaching mentees here, and uh, uh, one is uh, uh, Jin Wang. And, uh, and the other is Hong uh, Xiu. They are both, both very nice and uh, diligent guys, so uh, don't feel uh, uh, just come to bother them and, uh, and don't feel guilty. <laughs> and here is the, their, uh, their, their, their email contacts and office hours. Right? I feel like uh, providing. Let me let me enlarge the fonts to make it more clear. Is it clear by everybody? So we offer office hours every week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Every day we have an office hour. So uh, if you have any questions, questions do not hesitate. Um, the first come to the office hour because face to face uh, talk and discussion is the most effective way, right? Of course, you can also post questions on campus. So, uh, for me, the office hour will be right after the class, uh, from uh, 1.50 to 3. I have to leave at 3. Uh, this is uh, strict because I have to pick up my kid uh, in the daycare. So, uh, uh, forgive me if I have to skip uh, after 3. Okay? Uh, and previously, I usually have the office hour right before the class. But I found that because our class is at uh, 12.30, right? So before 12.30 is, is lunch time. I don't want to sacrifice our lunch, lunch time. So it's uh, after the class. We can, if you have any questions, we can walk to, to my office <coughs> to discuss. And uh, uh, for our TM, uh, Jim Wang, his uh, office hour will be on Monday and Friday from 3 to 5 p.m. So you see, each time he has like two hours uh, for the office hour. I, I think it's pretty uh, uh, generous. And uh, the uh, uh, TA's office is also in the uh, uh, map building. It's uh, in this room, 3423. Uh, on the third floor, just uh, just look, look at the room number, right? So uh, TM uh, Hong Xu, his uh, office hour is on Wednesday, right? Uh, it's in the morning, 10 to 12. It's also off uh, two hours. So, so maybe you have noticed that on Friday, you actually have four office, four hours for, the, uh, for help. Why? Because uh, I found that um, because many deadlines are on Saturday on the weekends. So uh, uh, right before the deadlines, the uh, is is when uh, students require most help. So I intentionally put four hours of uh, uh, four of uh, four office hours uh, on Friday. Hope that will help. Does it make sense? Okay, and uh, uh, given that we have a, a pretty large class, 
I'm still uh, negotiating with uh, the department to allocate uh, one more uh, TA. If we, if, if, if we succeed, we're going to uh, have uh, maybe have even more office hours, but that will be a subject to change. I will make an announcement on cameras uh, if, that, uh, if, uh, if, if it works. And also, uh, uh, as I mentioned before, right, once you have any problems, do not hesitate and come to the office or that's the best way to do that. And if you have any, uh, 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 if, if you're not convenient to come to the office hour, just let me know. If you want to talk to me in other times, other than office hours, uh, please uh, schedule, uh, send me an email and uh, make a schedule beforehand. Otherwise, because um, uh, the other, the other time, I'm mean, usually filled with uh, meetings and other schedules. Uh, if you just jump into my office, I might not be able to talk to you, like uh, discuss, have an in-depth, in-depth uh, discussion with you. Right? And also, uh, if you want actual help or something, you can also uh, try to uh, connect to our TM. And also, we'll watch the cameras. Uh, we encourage you to. Uh, discuss on cameras as well. So we'll watch the cameras and as long as you post a question, we're trying to respond to you as soon as possible. But on the weekends, uh, uh, it's not guaranteed, right? So, um, uh, yeah, but anyway, yeah. Uh, now that we have uh, abundant uh, office hours, please uh, uh, take advantage of that. Uh, do not waste on that. So um, let's look at the syllabus. So again, the link to the syllabus is also um, posted uh, on the uh, cameras. So this is linked to the course web page. You click it, you go back to the course web page. And this is our teaching mentee, the office hours, is the same thing. And this is a description of our course. So uh, uh, I would just. Uh, I'll just uh, read through it. So this, this course introduces the basic knowledge of, of machine learning. Topics uh, consist of several fundamental and widely successful supervised and or unsupervised learning algorithms, such as decision trees, perceptions, neural nets, kernel methods, support back machines, and probabilistic methods. So what's the outcome of this class? After taking this class, we hope that you will first understand machine learning ideas and paradigms. That's the very important goal, rather than just uh, learn how to use uh, TensorFlow. And you'll be able to identify appropriate machine learning problems for your own research on application needs. Know how and know why, right? And uh, you'll be able to design machine learning models and to implement learning algorithms with the appropriate tools if necessary. That's uh, 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 the expected outcome of this class. So books. So uh, there are no there are no designated textbooks for this course because there are many many machine learning books and each each book is like one thousand pages. Uh, uh, we don't have like. Uh, time and to to, to to go through even uh, even one book, right? So, but but here I just list the several books to fully extend the depth and breadth of topics we will discuss in the class. Right? If you want, if you are if you have pretty uh, sufficient time, you want to learn more, you can take a look at those books. So this one is a. Uh, the first one is, the, I think, the most recent uh, machine learning book uh, is written in a probabilistic perspective. That's my favorite one because this guy is now a research scientist in Google. Uh, he's a uh, he's a amazing guy. He's a probabilistic machine learning researcher. So I love it. Right? So this one is a classical book. It's, uh, it's called Pattern Recognition and Machine Learning, uh, and uh, the book was uh, published in 2000, uh, 2007. Uh, uh, this is also a kind of uh, probabilistic uh, perspective, uh, but it's, it's quite hard. 
this course. And this one's a course in machine learning. This is more friendly. Um, this is more friendly, and you can use it for self-study if you really want to do that. Okay. And uh, this one, uh, Trevor Hasty and Robert Tipramin, uh, and this element of statistics learning. So this is a, another classical work for machine learning, but it's purely from frequent point of view. Uh, uh, frankly speaking, I hate this book. And it tortures me a lot when I when I study uh, when I when I begin to study machine learning. But but who knows? Like if you, maybe you enjoy reading that. And this is another uh, classical book uh, written by David McKay, uh, who has uh, uh, passed away unfortunately. Um, uh, it's from Cambridge. So information theory, inference, learning algorithm. He provides a lot of uh, insightful and interesting uh, illustration and connection between information theory and uh, information theory and uh, machine learning. This is a very good book to read. But anyway, all those uh, books are not obligatory. Uh, if you have time, if you want to learn more, more in, and in depth, but, uh, you can look at those books. And most of them are free online. You can download them. You do not need to buy them. So uh, for referencing, so uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna uh, uh, read this sentence. I don't know what's the, what does this uh, uh, cost number represent. But basically, what does those prerequisites reflect? Uh, they actually reflect our assumption about background. We we'll assume that I mean to smoothly uh, take this course. Uh, you know basics of probability theory and statistics. How, how many have you taken a class of statistics or probability before? Oh, nice. Looks like I, I don't need to worry too much about that. And uh, you're familiar with linear algebra or vector matrix. How, how many of you have taken the linear algebra before? Or heard of that? Okay. 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 Yeah. Um, that's good. I feel, uh, I, feel, uh, I feel more confident about it. Okay. So, uh, and also we have basic uh, skills for algorithmic design programming skills. Okay. So, um, uh, have you taken a data structure course before? Already designed before. Okay, okay. Yeah, if you if you feel like uh, these three items are kind of you feel embarrassing about that, or if you're not confident about that, uh, but you still want to take this class, uh, do not hesitate. You can you can talk to me in a in an office hour, and we need to know uh, we need to figure out a way to to address that. Uh, because only with these three, uh, <coughs> if you're if you're good with the three, three items, uh, I don't think it will be very hard. But, but you might complain there's a lot of uh, workloads on that, but it won't feel like extremely difficult. You can handle that. Okay. So uh, getting help. So uh, again, let me let me repeat uh, what I have uh, previously uh, emphasized. Uh, take advantage of the instructor and the office hours. Right, we have a we have a uh, every weekday. We have a, uh, we have week office hours every weekday. So uh, uh, please please uh, have any questions. Do not hesitate to come to the office hour. We're we're really uh, uh, willing to help you. And, and our we we'll work hard to be accessible to students. So if you need, if you need to meet outside of office hours, please send us an email. We can schedule another time. Uh, and don't be shy if you don't understand that. That's really normal. Uh, uh, come to the office hour. Send an email or speak up in the class. Uh, you can interrupt me during the class anytime. I'll try to 
a lot of times the answer will make it uh, as clear as possible. If if you if if you if you are still feeling unclear, we can discuss after class. So anyway, our goal is let you let you uh, really understand we have everything we have gone through. Right? But but if you, if you do not understand and you do not let me know on that, then that's that's the issue, right? We are we're, we're open to to any any kind of questions, so don't be shy. And also, the class will rely on Cameron's uh, discussion group. I right? if, if, if by night, uh, you want to have any questions you want to post them, please feel free to post on Canvas, and uh, I will push the TMs to answer your questions as soon as possible. And also, I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Right? And uh, feel free to post questions regarding any question related to class, homework, schedule, material covering class, and also feel free to answer questions. Right? Uh, you're not encouraged. You're, you're not only encouraged to post questions. You're also encouraged to answer the questions, uh, so that we can form a kind of active learning environment, not only offline but also online. That will benefit uh, all of us. Uh, but do not post potential homework answers. That's not allowed. Right, someone asked, "Okay, uh, can anyone uh, share the solution of homework one?" <laughs> One part one, and someone uh, upload a PDF on that. That's not allowed. We'll delete it. Uh, we'll delete it immediately. We find such time. You can you can discuss some like ideas to solve them, but you cannot provide, I mean, details so that some people can copy them. That's not allowed. And all the important announcements will be made through the discussion group, and uh, we don't have a class meeting this because that will be very huge meetings. Okay, so uh, uh, let us stop here uh, today, and uh, on, on Thursday we'll continue to go through.